Venom started out just a new costume redesign, but was later given a whole origin, backstory, and life all its own when it became the villain turned anti-hero turned pretty much just hero now, known as Venom. With lots of established history to sift through, there's plenty to choose from when it comes to the top 10 most ridiculous things Venom has survived. Number 10, relationship with Eddie Brock. The love that Eddie and the Venom symbiote feel for one another is strong. So strong, in fact, that it is messed both of them up quite a bit over the years. In fact, this got so intense that when they finally joined back together following some time apart, Eddie Brock didn't really know what to do with the symbiote. It was different. It had been with other hosts, it was scared, and it desperately wanted to rekindle its relationship with Eddie and keep the two of them together forever. In desperation to stay bonded with its host, Venom was willing to do anything, including kill anyone who got in the way of its obsession with and love of Eddie Brock. This included even killing a priest who suggested that the relationship sounded unhealthy to Brock. And even after all they have been through, including multiple offspring, battling their own offspring, lies, secrets, deceit, shame, guilt, fighting heroes, becoming a hero, devouring people, they still have managed somehow to keep the relationship alive and both stay stay alive themselves all the while. That's pretty crazy considering the rate of divorce these days. Number nine, experimented on. Not only has the Venom symbiote survived being forcibly separated from their host, but while in isolation, they also survived the forced experimentation of the Life Foundation, who forced the symbiote to produce a number of offspring for the Life Foundation's own uses. The whole process did not seem pleasant for either the symbiote or really for Eddie. The Life Foundation took five offspring from Venom with force and left the symbiote drained and exhausted as a result. They also kept poor Venom in a sonic prison, which meant escape attempts would result in agony and be pretty tricky. And beyond that, they also had sonic weapons to be used at the ready. When Venom tried to utilize their human half of Eddie, this only made the Life Foundation wonder if Eddie Brock's life was actually worth anything to them. Yikes. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Venom lists, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number eight, Escaped Null. Well, really, I suppose the Venom was outcast for refusing to follow Null, but still, I'm surprised that the symbiote survived that entire falling out. Based on what we saw of Null during the King in Black event, he seems like a ruler who would be more inclined to destroy those that refuse to follow him as opposed to letting them go. Or, you know, just like, make them rejoin the hive forcefully and take away their individualism, which is also what happened. Still, the Venom symbiote in issue 35 of the 2018 series, which is also legacy issue number 200, shares with Dylan that this is why their name, which is actually not something pronounceable by humans as it is communicated through vibrations associated with the emotional spectrum, is so different from the other symbiotes around because they were cast out of the hive. Perhaps Null believed that casting out the Venom symbiote would have been enough to kill them. But if that was his thought process, it seems that he greatly underestimated this little symbiote that could. Number seven, Lee Price. Anytime I go back to reading these issues with Lee Price, it just breaks my heart and kind of ties my stomach in knots. Poor Venom. It's amazing to think about just all that the symbiote went through while bonded with Lee Price, who really was a jerk. How much they were mistreated, and then of course, how they ended up taking all the trauma they suffered and managing to use it to propel them into something greater, something better, as they continued to work towards being the hero that their partner, Flash Thompson, had taught them that they could be. Yay! Venom at this time as well needed a host, so they didn't really have much of a choice but try and stick with Lee because that was the only option at the time. Despite the fact that they disagreed with his morals, Lee Price was really awful to the Venom symbiote, and not only that, but also made some pretty bad decisions just in general for what kind of activity the two of them would get involved in. Fortunately, Venom was able to survive their relationship and come out of it much stronger even. Silver lining. Number six, escaped symbiotic prison which is pretty crazy when you consider that technically the Venom symbiote was also on the death row of symbiote prison. That's right, they were ready to eliminate the symbiote for wanting to bond with his hosts, working with them as a team, as opposed to dominating them. This could be a different version of the story where the Venom symbiote was kicked out of the hive, or it could be something that happened later after the symbiote was kicked out, which seems to be what the canon is leading us to now. Either way, instead of being vaporized following its imprisonment where it was to be studied by the other other symbiotes, it only managed to evade its sentence by sheer luck, it seems. The prison lab in which it was being held was transported to Battle World, where the symbiote was then released by Peter Parker, making its first appearance in terms of comic book history. Number five, 
corrupted by endless rage and bloodlust. One of the things that almost completely consumed and overwhelmed the Venom symbiote was its sense of rage. This started possibly when it was kidnapped and weaponized by an alien arms dealer, but progressively got worse with time as it soaked up the emotions of its hosts when it came to Earth. Especially Spider-Man. There was a lot of emotions with Spider-Man. Eddie Brock was a big part, likely, of the Venom symbiote sense of rage as well, but even then, the symbiote became too aggressive for even him, and at one point he actually had to be like, I think I'm out. Later, it would bond with Matt Gargan, which definitely made things a lot worse. The only thing that would save it from all this rage, hate, violence, and bloodlust, which it couldn't seem to really escape, was being reunited with the symbiote Hive during its time bonded with Flash Thompson. Here, the Venom symbiote was purified, allowing it to go on in the world without drowning in emotional turmoil and freeing the symbiote to truly become a hero while bonded to Flash as Agent Venom. Number four, devoured by a dragon. Well, sort of. It was more like Venom was like enveloped by a symbiote dragon. This was when Eddie Brock first ran into Null and learned the darker history of the symbiotes, including the history of his other, the Venom symbiote. Venom was fighting with Miles when they came to, and that was when Null and his symbiote dragon arrived, or well, a version of Null. In reality, this was not Null's true form, as he was still far away and not really fully awakened yet, but he was beginning to wake up. And even as a sort of symbiotic projection, this version of Null was still quite strong. After blowing up the dragon, it reformed and then kind of enveloped them while they talked with Null, which they probably didn't realize until it was too late. In the end, Venom only escaped because of the help of Miles Morales' Spider-Man, who distracted Null just long enough for them to get away, cutting through the dragon, who it turns out was in mid-flight once more, only to plummet down to Earth. Another thing they survived because because Venom had now gained the power to make wings, probably as a result of its interaction with Null and his dragon. Number three, Red Goblin. Well, Venom might be a pretty tough cookie now in the comics, and quite OP as a character and as a symbiote even alone. When Venom, bonded with Eddie Brock, came up against Red Goblin, the Carnage symbiote bonded with Norman Osborn, who had also recently been repowered with the Goblin Serum, it was no surprise the Venom appeared to be pretty outclassed. Despite the fact that it struggled to keep up, the Venom symbiote and Eddie both managed to survive this fight relatively well. Eddie even managed to get a few good hits in too before he called it quits. Venom would end up bonded to Spider-Man for a good amount of that fight and also managed to survive till the end, with both the Venom and the Carnage symbiotes basically being dismissed, just as Spider-Man and Green Goblin decided to duke it out themselves. Sadly, as well, Venom would also survive the death of his friend and former host, Flash Thompson. Number two, died and went to hell. During the Venom symbiote's time bonded to Flash Thompson, at one point they crossed paths with Mephisto's evil son, Blackheart. While battling against Blackheart, who was attempting to bring hell to all of Earth, they ended up dying. Because they were already on the threshold of hell when they all died, with Blackheart beginning to bring hell to the surface world, Venom went to hell, like actual hell. And yet, despite being there, Venom and the rest of the team he found himself with were able to escape by making a deal with Mephisto. Not something they wanted to do, but kind of something they had to do in the end. As a result, he survived the whole ordeal and was returned to Earth. Hell Earth, but they ended up fighting back against Blackheart and making it full Earth Earth again. Number one, thrown off a skyscraper and killed. During the King in Black event, I think we all had a certain expectation when it came to how we expected that story to go. It was the event that Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman had been building up to since Venom issue number one of their 2018 series. The final showdown was about to happen between Venom and the God of Symbiotes, Null. And we knew it would likely be up to Venom and possibly his son Dylan to save the day. Which is why many of us were left in amazement when kind of near the beginning of this event, Venom faced off with Null only to be thrown to his death from up high off a building. Venom was absorbed back into Null, seemingly amalgamated back into the hive, and kind of forced to go with the flow, basically snapped back into order, and Eddie was left alone just to die. Fortunately, despite Venom dying, they would find their way back to life and ultimately succeed in defeating Null, and even ended up replacing him, becoming the new ruler of Clintar and all the symbiotes throughout the universe. What do you think are some of the craziest things that Venom has survived. Who is your favorite Venom host? What do you think is the most wild power boost that Venom has ever received? I'm still waiting for the return of those endless pockets myself. That was a thing that Venom once had. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Till next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.